Hi, I'm Ree from mummyof4.com. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am looking at which is the very best supermarket delivery service. So the supermarkets we will be looking at are Sainsbury's, Morrison's, Asda, Ocado, Iceland and Tesco's. If you've been following my series that I've run here on this channel, I've been shopping with a different supermarket delivery service each week, looking at the different options they have, the quality of the products, all that kind of thing, and assessing which one is best. Now in this video, we're gonna compare them all, they're all gonna go head to head. We're gonna look at delivery charges, slot availability, product quality. We're going to look at which ones come out top for which reasons. So we're gonna go through the supermarkets and look category by category and see which one comes out on top. If you would like to see all of this information in a blog post, which is arranged kind of supermarket by supermarket and really giving all the details that you need to know, I will link that below. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday at 7 p.m. I do lots of grocery haul and meal planning videos, as well as vlogs, speed cleans, and loads of hacks. I've got loads of back to school content coming, so I would love it if you would subscribe for all of that. Now let's look at the first category, which is delivery price. With Sainsbury's, all orders under £40 are charged at £7 standard delivery, and orders over £40 will vary between 50p and £7 delivery slots. There is no delivery charge with Sainsbury's if you spend over £100 and you get your delivery after 2 p.m. Monday to Thursday. They do have a minimum order value of £25 and your delivery charge with Sainsbury's will be confirmed when you place the order. On to Morrison's who have delivery slots available from two to six pounds and they have a minimum order value of 25 pounds. Asda don't technically have a minimum order value but they do charge an additional three pounds for baskets under 40 pounds. Asda delivery prices range from one pound up to six pound 50. Ocado delivery price depends on how much you're ordering and when you're having it delivered. If you're ordering less than 75 pounds worth of goods then the delivery price is between $2.99 and $6.99. For orders over £75, you may be offered free delivery. And Ocado's minimum spend is £40. Iceland have a £2 delivery charge for orders under £35, but for orders over £35, they are free delivery, which I was really impressed with actually, because a lot of the supermarkets offer the delivery passes, which you shall get onto in a second, to kind of qualify for reduced delivery and things, but free delivery on the 35 pounds, that's pretty impressive. Tesco have standard deliveries available for four pounds 50 or five pounds 50, and then they have flexi saver deliveries, which are larger windows that you have to wait in for, for three pounds. Tesco's don't technically have a minimum order, but they do charge an additional four pounds per basket if your order comes below 40 pounds. On to delivery passes. They have different names with each supermarket, but most of them offer some sort of subscription service where you get your delivery for a fixed price. With Sainsbury's, you can opt to have a three, six or 12 month delivery pass. An anytime delivery pass entitles you to a free delivery every day, seven days a week, as long as there is a 40 pounds minimum spend. And this pass costs 60 pounds for 12 months, 35 pounds for six months, or £20 for three months. Sainsbury's also offer a midweek saver pass, which gives you one free delivery per day on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. There's still £40 minimum spend there. This pass costs £30 for 12 months, £18 for six months, or £10 for three months. As with Sainsbury's, Morrison's has a two-tiered delivery pass system. You can have the anytime deliveries, which are any day, Monday to Sunday, which will cost you £65 for the year, £40 for six months, or £8 a month on a rolling basis. If you want to go for the midweek option with Morrison's, so again, that's just deliveries on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, that will cost you £35 a year, £20 for six months, or £5 a month on a rolling basis. On to Asda, and as we are sort of still in the pandemic, I guess, Asda are still not offering any new take-ups of delivery pass. So if you do have an Asda delivery pass, I'd love it if you'd let me know in the comments how much that costs, because they're not kind of advertising that information on their website at the moment, because it is not currently available as an option to take up. The same goes for Ocado. They do have a smart pass delivery subscription, but they are not currently taking on any new customers for that at the moment. So again, if you know how much that one costs, please do let me know in the comments. 
Iceland, as I said, it is free delivery for over £35 anyway, so you don't have to get tied into any kind of monthly, six monthly annual subscriptions because you just have to spend the £35 and the delivery is free anyway. And then Tesco's who offer a delivery saver subscription, you can pay £7.99 a month for this or £47.94 for six months. On to something that I get asked a lot, which is what are the slot options that you are given when shopping with each supermarket? And perhaps more importantly at the moment, what is their availability like if you actually want to book a delivery slot? So I took all of this information directly off the website on the 29th of July. And again, it does obviously only apply to my area and my postcode because different areas will have different capacity. So do check directly on the website. But I thought this was a really good way to compare head to head how supermarkets are performing. So starting with Sainsbury's, they do something I quite like, which is most supermarkets start slots that only begin on the hour. So you could choose sort of from nine till 10 or maybe a nine till 11 slot. Sainsbury's actually do something a little bit different. So you can choose a nine till 10 slot or you can choose a half nine till a half 10 slot. And this may seem like a really small thing, but when you're a really busy mum, and I'm sure you busy mums out there can kind of empathize with this, especially when going into September when my children go back to school, I will be doing three school runs a day. So I will be back and forth and back and forth quite a lot. Sometimes time, especially my timetable is really quite tight in fitting things like work and actually going back and forth to school and then extracurricular activities and things in. So actually having the flexibility to choose a really specific time slot, I find really helpful. So big thumbs up there for Sainsbury's. So I checked for available slots on Wednesday the 29th. The next available slot from Sainsbury's was Sunday the 2nd, which was four days later. And it is probably important to note that no slots at all were available from Sainsbury's for non vulnerable people, so people that the government hadn't identified as vulnerable until recently, but obviously now Sainsbury's has opened up the delivery service to more customers. On to Morrison's, they offer one hour delivery slots from on the hour to on the hour. Now throughout the pandemic, I have found Morrison's pretty good in my area for slot availability, and I've never really struggled to get groceries delivered from them. I think it's also important to note that Morrison's has a little feature which I really like when you're booking your slots and that they've got a button to press to take you directly to the next available slot which saves you scrolling through potentially days or weeks of unavailable slots. So I do kind of like that as a little special mention. First available slot was Wednesday the 5th of August and that is one week after the day I was checking. On to Asda who only offer two hour windows and if you are super busy, if you're working outside the home or if you are doing a lot of school runs like I'm going to be, two hour windows might be inconvenient or you might have to purposely stay in in the evenings or the weekend to receive your goods. Slot availability from Asda has been a bit tricky through the pandemic, they've been one of the ones that have been quite difficult in this area to get a slot with. When I tried to book a slot on Wednesday the 29th, there was one available on Sunday the 2nd. So that's just four days later. On to Ocado, who again have had really good availability of slots through the pandemic in my area. When I checked on Wednesday the 29th, the next available slot was Monday the 3rd, which was five days later. On to Iceland. Now their slots are two hour slots, much like Asda. And I say much like Asda because actually some people did say in the comments that Asda in different areas were offering different slot options. So do let me know if any of the information I'm giving here is different in your area. I just know that this is accurate in my area as it stands at the moment. Anyway, Iceland, they offer the two hour slots. You do have to be willing to wait in, but then you've got to go back to the fact that it is free delivery, which is really good. The other thing that is a massive bonus with Iceland is their slot availability is amazing. So when I checked for available slots, I could actually have a huge variety of different slots from today up until the whole rest of the week. So for the next seven days, I could have had a delivery slot at any given day, which I think is amazing. On to Tesco's, which offer two different types of slots. I think I touched on this earlier. You can have the one hour slot from on the hour to on the hour. Or alternatively, you can pick a flexi saver slot, which gives you a four hour window. And I believe, although I haven't actually used them myself, they send you a text message to tell you roughly when within that four hour window they'll be with you. Now, Tesco did not do well in my little experiment here. 
I tried to book a slot and I couldn't get one for 11 days with Tesco. So Tesco definitely came off worse in the ability to get a slot in a timely manner. On to cutoff times. Now most of the supermarkets are pretty similar when it comes to cutoff times in that it's quite late in the evening the night before. Sainsbury's has a cutoff time of 11 p.m. Morrison's has a cutoff time of one minute to midnight the night before your delivery, although this did used to be 8 p.m. earlier in the pandemic, so you had to edit and make sure all your amendments were made by 8 p.m. Glad that that's gone because that did actually catch me out once. Asda has a cutoff time of 10 p.m. the night before. Iceland is 11 p.m. Tesco is 11.46 the night before. And the one that really falls short here is Ocado. Now, Ocado needs you to update your order and confirm everything two days before so that's 48 hours before as listed on their website but when i had my delivery they wanted me to confirm it by saturday night for what i wanted to have delivered on monday morning so this can be a, a huge problem if your family are like we're out of this we're out of that on the sunday the day before your order being delivered so that's something worth bearing in mind it's not something they used to do and hopefully they will go back to the old way when the pandemic crisis eases off but that is something worth considering if you're shopping with them at the moment now on to something really important which is product range and quality sainsbury's i found had a lovely range of products a lot of them were really really nice they did have some deals and things one thing I will say though is the mincemeat I received in that particular haul that I did on my channel was really short dated and some of the raspberries were a bit iffy. So that is worth noting. That was just a one-off. I have barely shopped with Sainsbury's. I don't know how do you find Sainsbury's and the quality of their products when they're delivered. But I must say the rest of the haul I had no problem with at all and I did like their selection. Morrison's had a really nice extensive range, some really good own brand products as well as branded. And I can't say I've ever had any issues and I've shopped with them quite a few times with short dates and things. I think they've been pretty good. Asda probably have one of the most extensive ranges that I found. The Ocado range was really nice. It was quite high end, included Waitrose products and they're soon gonna be partnering up with M&S. So if you're looking for some sort of higher end products and Ocado is definitely worth checking out. Iceland really surprised me because I always thought of Iceland as just frozen food and I figured they'd have a really good selection of frozen food, which they do, but I was also really impressed with their range of fresh and dry food. One thing I will say about Iceland is they didn't have any kind of cheaper options because they, they are quite a budget kind of supermarket. They didn't really have any cheaper options for kind of household goods and things. So if you are buying household goods, you're probably better off buying your food from Iceland and buying the household stuff elsewhere. And things like I wanted cheapy dishwasher tablets and they didn't have that option. But other than that, super impressed with their food range. And then Tesco that I've shopped with for years really before I sort of started shopping around have, do have a good range of products and I have generally found them pretty good. Um, I've also got a lot more extensive experience with Tesco's and when I have had issues with things in the past and I guess it's only fair I've had more issues because I've shopped with them more but whenever I phoned them up they've always been fantastic with the customer service and refunded things immediately. Now let's talk about stock availability, substitutions and limits imposed by each of the supermarkets. Now with Sainsbury's, I can't say I really struggled to get anything in particular and the substitutions I received were absolutely fine. They don't have a set basket upper limit like some of the supermarkets did and some of them still have actually, so I'll let you know which ones those are. But they don't have an upper limit of how many things you can put into your basket they say on their website they may still have some restrictions on certain items but i didn't personally come across any of those while i was shopping with them now morrison's and again i've shopped with them quite a few times so i've had more kind of extensive experience with them they have been having certain items like bananas and things out of stock totally and unable to buy now i'm hoping this will ease off as it's coming out of the pandemic but it is an experience that i've had while shopping with them at certain stages of the pandemic morrison's were not accepting substitutions so i know that i was delivered things Things as a substitution and told I have to keep them because they weren't accepting substitutions back. But they have abolished that policy now as we're kind of edging our way out of the pandemic. Asda did used to have a limit of three of any one item per basket, but that could be three packs of honey glazed ham and three packs of plain ham. So it was kind of just, I don't know, some algorithm thing that they put into their website that you couldn't buy any more of one exact thing so you could literally have two boxes of cereal the same cereal different sizes and you have three of one and three of the other that's how it used to work that has actually gone now although their website does state that they may still impose limits on some products 
if necessary. My last ads of delivery, I had three substitutions and they were all fine. Mercado had almost no limits on the shopping, although they have asked their customers to spend up to £250 only per shop, although this does seem to be more of a request than something they are imposing. In my last Ocado haul, I had two substitutions which were fine and two items that they said were out of stock and they didn't have substitution for. Onto Iceland, they did have certain restrictions earlier in the crisis that have now been removed. And the one time I have shopped with Iceland, I had two items that were substituted, they were fine, and no items that I requested that were out of stock with no alternative given. Now with Tesco, they had a limit of 80 items per drop earlier on in the pandemic. And I know I had so many messages from you guys saying that you really struggled with this, especially if you're a large family like me, or like we were doing, we were shopping for other family members too, perhaps family members that weren't so used to using the internet and things. So at some one stage we were shopping for the six of us plus other family members and the 80 item limit was really tricky. This has now been bumped up to 95 item limit, but it is the only supermarket that I found that has still got this upper limit on your basket size. Now on to how the different supermarkets communicate with you. Now all the supermarkets email you when you place your order to tell you what you have ordered and when you have updated your order to say what your newly updated order is. So that goes the same for all the supermarkets. In addition to that, Sainsbury's will email you your receipt and bring you a printed version of your receipt. Morrison's have kind of gone paper free and they email you your receipt but they don't bring you a paper version and to be honest this suits me fine. They also send out text message reminders the day before to remind you to update your order and another text message when your delivery driver is on their way. Asda is all paper free as well so they email you the, the receipt but they also send you the text when the driver is on their way. Ocado I would say is the winner when it comes to receipts and communication because not only do they email you your receipt but the breakdown of the receipt is just genius. They break everything down into fridge and cupboard and freezer, just like most of the other supermarkets do. But within each category, they break it down to when things need to be used by. So when you're doing your meal planning and you're doing your stock rotation, you know exactly which order things need to be used, which I think is just genius. It's a really good touch. And then Tesco's, you do get the text message reminders and the email reminders to update your order the night before, but they do not email you a copy of the receipt with all the prices and things, you have to keep hold of the paper copy they drop off with your shopping. On to points and rewards. Morrison's have apparently got a reward scheme called Morrison's More. Please let me know if you use it because I've only just discovered it even though I've been shopping with them online for a few months now. So I will link all the details to this in the blog post which is down in the description which gives you all the information that I'm talking to you about now. Sainsbury's has nectar points which you can spend in various places. I did have a nectar card years ago but I haven't got one anymore and I wonder is it something worth doing? Please do let me know in the comments because my experience with nectar over the last few years has been very limited. Asda have a George rewards system for clothing and things but don't actually have any kind of point scheme to go along with their groceries. A car Ricardo have a vitality rewards scheme which rewards you for shopping with healthy foods and it's got different rewards depending on how much you spend on healthy goods. Iceland has something called a bonus card which I've not used personally. For every £20 you save on your card, Iceland adds £1 onto your card. And then Tesco, which I have used their club card scheme extensively over the years. I've actually got a Tesco club card credit card that I only use when I shop in Tesco, so I don't actually use it anywhere else, and then I just pay it straight off. Because by using my Tesco club card credit card in Tesco, I get even more points. We have had a lot of stuff out of points from Tesco's over the years. We had Merlin annual passes, we've had lots of tickets places, we've had meals out. And obviously when you are a large family, you spend a lot on groceries, it's nice to have a little kickback. So personally, the reward scheme I've used most over the years and I've got most out of is Tesco, but please do let me know if any of the others are really worth exploring and if you've really benefited from them. On to price. Now, Ocado probably comes in at the more expensive end, although Ocado did send me an email saying that I had saved money compared to Tesco's, which was interesting. Then I would say Sainsbury's is just down from Ocado with the kind of the pricing level. It is definitely more of a high end kind of supermarket rather than a budget one. Although there are still deals to be had in both Ocado and Sainsbury's. 
when you shop at Tesco, they're now showing Aldi price match on a lot of products, which is good because Aldi obviously is a budget supermarket. So if they're price matching with them, then that sort of makes us feel like we're getting quite a good deal. Iceland was fantastic on price for frozen things and a lot of the fresh things. And certainly if you shop their deals, it was really, really good. At the checkout at Iceland, it kind of prompted you, right, you've got four out of five things. And if you add one more thing, you'll get this deal. And if you just shop the deals in Iceland, I'm sure you would get a lot of savings and you would probably save a lot of money on your shop. But I would say stick with food in Iceland and do household elsewhere. I would say Morrison's did pretty well on price but I'd probably have to say the cheapest supermarket, just based on price alone, I have found to be Asda. They do have a lot of rollback prices. I always feel when I shop with Asda, I get quite a lot for my money. I took all of the information about delivery prices and things directly from the supermarket websites on the 29th of July, 2020. So that is the date in which I compared them all the same time. So if things have changed since then about limits or availability or whatever, then please check back to the supermarket websites, but I just thought it was important to mention that. I also wanted to say that it may vary from area to area. So do check what the availability, certainly for slots and things like that is in your own area, because I know it does vary across the country. So the verdict for each supermarket, pros and cons. Sainsbury's, I really like their on the half hour starting slots, as well as the on the hour slots. Their products seemed really nice, although we did have those short dated items that wasn't ideal. Overall, I really liked Sainsbury's, although perhaps they weren't the cheapest supermarket. It was really helpful for me that they had the option to start slots on the half hour, not just on the hour, which may be a game changer for me when all the children are back to school and we're crazy busy. Morrison's I've used really frequently and I have found it so helpful that their slot availability has been good. I used to find their early cutoff time at 8 p.m. a bit of a pain because I tend to like to update the order after the children have gone to bed, but now they've moved that, that's kind of something that I like a lot more. I love the Morrison's jump to the first available slot when I'm looking for a slot, it saves so much time and faffing. So I'd say Morrison's are pretty good on price as well, pretty good all around supermarket. Asda is really competitive on price. The only option if you don't have a delivery saver account and you can't get those at the moment is a two hour slot. I don't know if the one hour slots are reserved for people that pay monthly, I'm not sure. Please do let me know if you know that answer in the comments. The two hour slot that you still have to pay for is a bit off-putting for me when we're back to being really crazy busy. Ocado went bad on price, they just weren't the cheapest. I loved their breakdown of the receipt. I thought that was just genius and so, so helpful when you're meal planning. But the sticking point for me has got to be the 48 hours in advance cutoff because that can be really problematic. As you know, when you're a busy family, you're running out of things kind of last minute and you really need to be able to update your order right up until the 11th hour. So that is a bit of a sticking point for me until they change that, which hopefully will happen as the pandemic eases. Iceland, I think the one that surprised me the most the slot availability is amazing and it's free delivery. I mean, that is fantastic. Yes, I know it's the two hour slot, which yeah, might prove a bit of a problem for me. It may not prove so much of a problem for you. I don't know, let me know in the comments. Is that something that is kind of really relevant to you? Like how long you've got to stay in to receive your shopping or is it not so much a problem? But I must say that if it's going to be free and I can actually get the slots, that might be worth staying in for on a weekend or getting one later in the evening or something. Tesco I have used for years, mainly out of habit. I'm really glad that doing this series has kind of forced me to explore other supermarkets. I will say that it's super easy when you've been shopping somewhere for ages and ages and ages, that they've got all your favorites in there and you know what you need to order, you can just reorder it. I do find when I'm ordering from anywhere kind of new, I do end up perhaps getting something that's a bit of a weird size because it's hard to know what it is until you've bought it before. I love their club card points. We've really done well as a family out of those over the years. However, they came out worst when it came to booking a slot. So when I tried to book a Tesco delivery slot, I couldn't get one for 11 days, which is a really long time. So from the point of view of actually getting a delivery slot, they came out worst out of all of the supermarkets. So I hope this has been helpful. I will link the blog post below. We can find out all of this information if you just kind of want to read over it and process it. Please do let me know in the comments where you shop from and how you find them. And if you'll be trying anywhere new having watched this video. If you've liked this video, please give it a huge thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe. Hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday at 7 p.m. My latest video is just across here and another video 
video you may enjoy from my channel is just down here. See you guys soon.